Okay, everyone, I'd like to introduce um, the Harrison Group for their presentation, Unlocking Savings, an Intro to Pre-Tax Plans. Brian Miller will be leading the discussion today. Brian is from the Harrison Group, a pre-tax plan administration firm situated just outside of Philadelphia in Havertown. Over the past 13 years, Brian has navigated various roles at the Harrison Group, from account manager to implementation specialist, and for the past five years, he has served as the director of new business. In his professional journey, Brian uh, collaborates closely with his father, Rich Jr., who is the founder and president of the Harrison Group. Outside of the realm of pre-tax plan administration, Brian is deeply involved in the education sector. He serves as the head coach of the varsity baseball team at Haverford High School and has dedicated 12 years to coaching both baseball and soccer at local high schools. Uh, through these experiences, Brian has cultivated a profound understanding of the pivotal role education and mentorship play in shaping the minds of our youth. Moreover, he emphasizes with the administrative and budgetary uh, he empathizes, pardon me, with the administrative and budgetary challenges that many educational institutions in encounter. He hopes that this discussion will help our ADVIS members unlock additional savings for both schools and their employees with a better understanding of the benefits of pre-tax plans. Reflective of Brian's values, the Harrison Group mirrors the values upheld by many independent schools, placing a premium on familial bonds, respect, and exemplary service. With an unofficial model of we answer your call, the Harrison Group prides itself on providing prompt and attentive assistance to all inquiries, ensuring that every caller encounters a live voice ready to address their concerns and questions. And now Brian will be presenting Unlocking Savings, an intro to pre-tax plans today. Brian, take it away. Great, thank you so much for that intro. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're really excited to be here from the Harrison Group today. Um, just to kind of go over again, our firm administers pre-tax plans. Um, specifically, we do um, administer pre-tax plans for over 150 schools, school districts, and area colleges, as well as some schools which are our, our members of ADVIS. Okay, um, so we will jump into the presentation. So today we'll be discussing flexible spending accounts, health savings accounts, as well as other pre-tax plans. We will also review some things you might want to keep in mind if you need a third party admin. So in our in our day to day business, there are many acronyms that we use um, just to kind of explain some of them <clears throat> that you may encounter in FSA. Uh, that's a flexible spending account. There are two of those, a dependent care FSA and a health care FSA. There's also a health savings account. There's also a high deductible health plan. Sometimes you'll see QHDHP. That's a qualifying high deductible health plan. Um, and TPA is would be third party administrator. Um, so th those are just some acronyms you'll, you'll see. Um, with the Harrison Group and um, firms like 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 us, um, and what they mean. Why would you implement a flexible spending account? It's a good question, um, and I'm sure you're wondering that right now. Um, employers who sponsor flexible spending accounts save payroll tax, saving payroll taxes when employees contribute to FSAs. Employees also decrease their federal and sometimes state and local taxes when they contribute to an FSA. So the FSA is, is a great idea. Um, as you can see, the, the percentage, um, it, it benefits employees and it also benefits employers. So, um, you know, if you're looking for some savings, looking for some, you know, offering a good benefit for the employees to save some money, the flexible spending account is a great way to go. The IRS has uh, guidelines on how much you can elect for the FSA and also what you can use it on. So the first, I guess, general rule is an employee must be covered by a group medical insurance plan, but does not need to be covered by a company's health plan. 
okay? Um, types of medical expenses you could use with the FSA, medical and prescription drug expenses, dental and vision expenses, orthodontia for a child, uh, over-the-counter meds, menstrual care products, COVID fighting items, the annual IRS maximum contribution for plan years that start in 2024 is $3,200. And uh, if you chose to have a carryover, an employee could carry over $640 um, into the next plan year. If you did not want to have a carryover, you could have a grace period, which allows the employees an additional two and a half months to spend um, any unused balance, or you can choose to have neither. Um, it's a use it or lose it um, account, and that's an IRS provision. So if there's employees who do not use the entire balance um, and they have less than the carryover amount or more than the carryover amount, they would be unable to claim that. Um, so employees need to budget wisely when they elect this account. Um, we always say it's a good idea to just maybe do the carryover limit just so um, there's no real fear of losing the money if you're interested in doing it. Um, the, it's an annual election, so that's why you need to kind of budget wisely because you need to elect during open enrollment. Um, the, the only way you could elect during the plan year would be if you had a change in status um, and the fu and the funds are front loaded. So if someone elected $500, they would have access to that five, $500 on the first date of the plan year. Um, also employers have the option to contribute to the healthcare FSA if they choose to, um, and you can choose to fund up the $500 for an employee if you wanted to do that. Um, most employers um, just allow the employee to, to do the election through payroll, um, but employers have the option, okay? The next account we'll talk about is the daycare FSA. The IRS has rules on what it can be used for and how much can be elected uh, in a plan year. So the dependent daycare FSA can only be used for daycare, nanny, babysitter, preschool, after school care, summer camps, elder or adult care expenses it can't be used for anything other than that. So if if um you know your employee if you know you have an employee population that has a lot of children or they're you know it might be it might be something that you want to offer this um because it is really a great account for for how much daycare cost is these days. Um, the IRS says that you can elect 5,000 if you're married filing jointly or single parent. Um, the IRS says that if you're married filing separately, the maximum election will be 2,500. Okay. Uh, just like the healthcare FSA, it's an annual election. So what that means is you have to elect it before the plan year starts. The only way you'd be able to elect during the plan year is a change in status, meaning you get married, uh, you have a child, there's a death in the family. Um, for daycare, a daycare closing would be a change in status. It's use it or lose it, um, and there is no rollover provision. So if you want to implement this benefit, um, just know that there is no rollover, but you could have a grace period, which is two and a half months after the plan year ends to give the employees more time to spend their balance. Um, like the healthcare FSA or unlike the healthcare FSA, the money's available after it's withheld. So in my experience at the Harrison Group, there's been people calling up saying, why isn't there money on my card? I elected the daycare, I elected $5,000. It's because there's not money available until it's withheld from their pay. So. You know, if there's a semi-monthly pay schedule, there's money or, you know, the 15th, the last day of the month. Um, the first time there'll be money in the daycare account is the 15th, the first 15th uh, in a plan year. OK, and you just need to make sure um, with non-discrimination testing um, that 
every is in compliance. So if there's questions about that, we can help out with that. So this slide is just going to give you kind of an idea of potential savings from the FSA. So as you can see, this is just some generic numbers here. Um, if you had 50 benefit eligible employees um, and 12 of them contribute to an FSA, um, on, on average, how, how much would each employee contribute per month to 50? Um, you can kind of see the tax savings. So number of employees, 12, monthly employee FSA contribution, total monthly contributions to FSA, the employee monthly tax savings, $727.50, total employee annual tax savings, $87.30. Um, and then the employer, um, $229.50, and then annually, that's $2,754. So, oh, sorry about that. Um, so the total estimated annual savings for an employer offering an FSA with the Harrison Group um, after, you know, how much you would you would save in this example, and then the cost of the admin fees, you're saving $1,684. So, and that's based on an average of 13.6% federal um, tax, and then 7.65% FICA tax, and 3% state tax rate. Um, and then based on employers matching FICA tax rate of 7.65%. Okay, so if you have a larger population, you know, the savings is going to be more. But in this example, you know, you're going to be saving seven, 16 or about $1,700 uh, just by offering something that's going to help the employees save save money on, on taxes, on items they're probably put um, spending post-tax, okay? Um, this, this slide's just, uh, basically an example of a family, you know, how it would, it would Im impact the family. So this is the Walker family. Um, Anthony and Tanya are super busy parents, uh, on typical weekends, they can be found running around to different fields, watching their kids play during any given month. They could spend over a hundred dollars at their local target on FSA eligible expenses like Tylenol, Sudafed, feminine care products, allergy meds ice packs, band-aids, children's time, all sunscreen. They also use their healthcare FSA to pay for dental dental visits, uh, prescriptions and children eyeglasses. In addition, Anthony and Tanya take advantage of the daycare FSA to re to reimburse themselves for after school care um, and outdoor summer camp. By using the FSA, they could save two, $2,300. Okay, so that's just a, an example of a regular family taking advantage of the medical FSA and the daycare FSA. The next slide here is gonna talk about health savings accounts. Um, you might hear an FSA is an HSA because it, it technically is a health savings account, but there is an actual different account called a health savings account or an HSA, okay? Just like FSA's health savings accounts will allow the employer to save payroll taxes. Employees are also able to, de to decrease their payroll taxes, pay federal income taxes, as well as certain state and local taxes. They are also able to save money on a pre-tax basis to pay for eligible out-of-pocket expenses during the year, and also unused amounts roll over from year to year. So it's a really flexible and portable account you know, if employees contribute to it and then leave uh, a, a company or a school, they still have access to that funding, unlike the healthcare FSA, where it's use it or lose it. You need to use it during the plan year. Um, in a healthcare FSA, if you leave the company and you have a balance and you can't claim it, the balance stays with the with the employer. So the health savings account is, is a really, really good account. Um, you need to have a high deductible health plan offered to to have a HSA available. So keep that in mind. But if you have the high deductible health plan in place, this is a great account to offer for the employees. 
just some guidelines that the IRS has put in place, who is eligible to contribute to an HSA. As I just mentioned, individuals who are covered under a, a qualified high deductible health plan. Okay, so that was that acronym I used earlier, QHDHP, HDHP, same thing, high deductible health plan. Individuals who have no other disqualify, disqualifying health coverage would also be eligible. Individuals who are not enrolled in Medicare. Keep in mind, it's there's a difference between being eligible and enrolled in Medicare. Okay, so if someone is enrolled in Medicare, they are not eligible for the HSA. If someone is eligible for the Medicare, they can technically still be eligible for the HSA. Um, and then the final example, individuals who are not claimed on someone else's tax return are also eligible to contribute to an HSA. For 2024, the minimum amount that needs to be um, met if it's paired with an HRA um, is 1600 for single and then um, 3200 for family. And I will get into what an HRA is um, later on, okay? The IRS also has maximums on how much an individual coverage employee can, can contribute in a given calendar year and then also a family coverage employee. So. For 2024, an, an individual coverage employee could contribute up to $4,150, and then family coverage employees could contribute up to $8,300. Anyone who's 55 or older can contribute an additional $1,000. So anyone 55 and older can contribute $5,150 if they're an individual coverage, and then $9,300 if they're family coverage. Um, there can be employer contributions, so it, it's not just employee. Um, if the employer wants to contribute to the health savings account, they can do that. Um, and it has become very popular for employees to offer seeding for the HSA, okay? Just to go over what's eligible for the health savings account, um, just kind of the same stuff as the FSA, um, medical prescription drugs, dental and vision, over-the-counter meds, menstrual care products, COVID fighting items. After you turn 65 years old, you can use whatever remaining balance in your HSA to pay for Medicare premiums. So that's something different than the healthcare FSA. Um, but there's a lot of expenses that are, are covered under the health savings account that would save an employee money. Just a review of some other um, benefits that we offer. Uh, the HRA, I just mentioned that. That's an employer-funded arrangement to uh, for out-of-pocket medical, dental, and vision expenses based upon what the employer wants to uh, reimburse. Um, depending upon your medical plan design, it could, it could decrease the cost of your plan. Uh, we had a township that we did their HRA um, with 97 employees. Uh, it saved them approximately $860,000 by switching to a high deductible health plan from a copay plan uh, while paying for all the out-of-pocket costs for the employees. So just know these high deductible health plans um, could go a long way saving your uh, your company money. And ICRA could also be um, another benefit that you could offer your, your part-time employees, okay? And that's an individual coverage HRA. Um, another or Other accounts are a mass transit spending account and or parking spending account, which would save your employees, um, save your employees money on commuting to work and parking at work, um, depending upon how they travel, it could, it could save, their, save them up to 20%. Um, finally, an educational assistance plan can reimburse your employees for their tuition costs and or their st student loan costs. So if you're interested in this, um, if you're interested in the Harrison Group, if you're not interested in the Harrison Group and you wanted to look for a third party administrator, um, these are some things you want to look for. 
As you can probably already guess, the items on this slide are items that our firm, firm provides to clients and their participants. Um, this has allowed us to keep 98% of our existing clients. The 2% that we do not retain, um, they're usually acquired by another firm or they've decided to move to move the plan um, to a, you know an existing TPA um, or maybe bring it in house. But just some things to watch out for and just things to think about um, if you are interested in implementing any of these plans. Um, you know, we have um, all this available to you. If you have any questions, um, here's my information. Um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it was great to speak with all of you. Um, and uh, we look forward to any future opportunities with this that come out of this. And uh, if you need any additional information or would like a proposal, just please contact me. And thank you so much for your time.